in 2019 yeah. across Spain. And it was an eye-opening experience for us having to play music. And man, people in Europe love Ghanaian music. The African continent is blessed with some of the greatest music bands and Ghana can boast of the band Fra, young talented instrumentalists and singers making waves with their sound. It's a 360 conversation here on Talkertainment. I am Paula Amabruni. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. You're still watching Talk Entertainment on Ghana Web TV. Now I have here seated on my couch two members of Ghanaian band Fra. George and Salom. Salom is the guitar player and George is the band leader and bass player. Yes, yeah, yeah. Welcome guys. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Great. It's good to have you. I've been following your progress and I love your music. You guys are doing amazing and if you haven't checked them out, it's like, you know, you are messing out because yeah. they do real authentic African music. But let me find out from you. What do you do? Will you say it's Afrofunk, High Life? How would you describe your music? Um, it's Afrofusion. Okay. Yeah, but it's um, dominated strongly by high life. High life is like the bedrock, and we we fuse it with various genres: jazz, pop, funk, okay. Afrobeat. You name it. Okay. So just as your name says, from what do we be Afro from? I feel Afra. that <laughs> energy. Great. So some of uh, the band. Just tell us the genesis. How did Fra come to be, and then the members? Let me start. How many are you in the band? So the core members of the band are six. six. Um, but we have a seventh member who's like an ad hoc member. Uh, yes, uh, we started out in 2015. Mm. But uh, prior to that, we had been playing together as friends. Uh, we we're actually in the same church together, and okay. uh, George and the drummer had been friends since high school, and. They met the uh, keyboard player along the line. And I think one day they came to Koforidia, where I lived, for a workshop. And they met me over there and we became friends. So around that time, I was in Legon and we linked up, exchanged contacts. And when I came back to school, I was on vacation. When I came back to school, I met up with them and I started playing with them. So in 2015, they, we just came up with the idea of, you know, having, coming together to form a band and doing our own music. Uh, even though we're like playing at pubs and bars by then and doing cover stuff for other artists. So later the following year in 2016, we decided to brand ourselves properly and the name we came up was Fra. Fra. Yeah, they came, you came up with it, yeah. So what is the real meaning? I know like Fra is in tree, you see, it's yeah, a mixture. It's, it's a kind, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it's, it means mix. Mix. Yes. Great. You make mention that uh, you came from, you started from the church. Yeah, some people, musicians, oh, once I was born in my mother's womb, <laughs> I just knew how to sing. I started singing mm -hmm. and all that. But with the church, we have some instrumentals who say, okay, maybe when you play for the church, you feel like, oh, it's free and all that and all that. What would you say about that, the church where you came from? In churches where maybe they feel like, okay, the instrumentalists, they are part of us, so, you know, no money and all that. They are just playing for the God and all that. How do you balance that? Because I've had a lot of people say, they it's just free, free like that, all of that. Well, I think it depends on your personal um, arrangements or agreements with the church. Mm. Some people play for free and some people play to be paid. So, yeah, it, I think it's a personal decision. Okay. Yeah, some people decide just, just to play to help the church or, you know, for God. Exactly. And others also see it as a business. But, you know, for, for us, we, we play in church just to support the church because we are, we are already okay with the band. Mm, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Well, one thing I observe is that with bands, it looks like it starts with a four member. So, mm. if somebody that you want to start up a band, what are the core instrumentalists or what do you need on board or in your team to make up a solid band? I think every band uh, is made of primarily of a drummer, mm. uh, a bass player, and a keyboardist. Um, and usually there's a singer. So at least four, although I've seen a lot of bands with less members, like th um, three. It's very common in America and Europe to meet what we call a jazz trio, or even a normal trio, where you have just like a drummer, a bass player, and either a keyboardist or 
a guitar player. There are s several examples um, like that. The most popular one I can think of right now is John Mayer, who has his own trio. He plays the guitar and sings at the same time. Okay. He's being backed by a drummer and a bass player. So if one of the members is going to double as a singer, then three can do it. But four, five, six, seven, I mean, you can go above that. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, this man, Falakuti, had a team of running into like 40 plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So when he, actually when he traveled, he traveled with a, with a very large team. But uh, to answer your question, there's usually a core in the band, which starts out, in our case, uh, we were four. And when the band becomes bigger, when you guys get gain some traction for yourself, you can definitely build up on that and bring other people on board to beef up the sound. Okay, yeah. okay, great. So uh, you coming together, what has been your greatest inspiration? What is the goal? What is the plan? So for us now, I mentioned earlier on that we started out as a cover band. Mm. Then it got to a point where we were like, um, no, we need to take ourselves, put ourselves out, out there come up on stage front and center and brand ourselves as an artist. Why did we go in this direction? We look back at Ghana's history and we realized that most of Ghana's music from the 80s, 70s and 60s had been born in band culture. We've had a lot of bands coming up from Ghana and uh, making a big name for themselves out there in the West. The most prominent exa example being Osibisa. Hello. Yeah. Rambles, um, E.T. Mensa, the African Brothers Band, like so many of them. If, you, if your father or mother, if your parents or grandparents had any vinyl records, you would see most of these bands I'm talking about out there. And I think, as I now, there are not many of them are active. I can only think of Pathomas and uh, the Kwashibu area band. Abu Taylor and a few others, mm -hmm. yeah, but we don't have any current crop of like um, contemporary bands doing the same thing that they were doing back then, making the same impact that they were, they were, making, they were making back then. So we decided to take it upon ourselves to be the guinea pigs in this case, and our little experiment has blown up, and you're looking at it right now, as Fra. So proud, because if you're Ghanaian and you experience the quality the kind of music that you yeah. do the energy everything is is crazy yeah george so what do you think has contributed to ghana not having like a lot of vibrant bands and all that what has been the challenge um, well um i think salom stated earlier that um, back in the day in the 60s and the 70s when when you are asked to mention your favorite artist you definitely mention the name of a band mm -hmm. um, but we learned that around the 80s there was a little bit of political unrest with the the coups and the military regimes and all that and you know some of the band's music were political and you know there were curfews and all that so the bands couldn't perform so most of the active bands then um, left Ghana for Nigeria and other African countries and Europe so that sort of killed the band culture um, around that time and fast forward you know electronic music started the beats and all of that so that has really played a major role in um, the band culture going extinct at a certain point of time until recently where the Ebo Taylors and the Pat Thomas's Jedubli and Bule um, picked it up again. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you will encourage more young people to, you know, form bands and I, later we'll talk about the challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I want to find out who are your greatest top three music bands. Everybody got an inspiration though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think we have to an answer this question individually yeah. <laughs> okay george how are your case uh -huh. top three general yeah in general in general wow man definitely ocb sir okay. Def definitely ocb sir um and then uh Abel taylor Abel taylor and the salt one city band um the last band uh Okay, I'm going to come back to you. Salam, um, <laughs> give me your, your favourite. Yeah, so CBSA is also a favourite uh, with me, not just because of their sound, but even because of their uh, style. Um, I actually love the album covers because they have this very psychedelic um, feel mm -hmm. to them. Looking at the album cover and listening to music, 
totally transports you somewhere else. So um, Osibisa definitely in my top three. Actually, in the band, most of us love Osibisa. And uh, I can also talk about a band which I got into recently from Nigeria called The Cavemen, uh, who are also very, doing very well in Nigeria. I think they're one of the new bands on the scene who have really shaken things up and gathered a following in a very short time. Okay. Yes, and I, I actually love vintage stuff, so I'll also talk about Earth, Wind and Fire, which is a band from <laughs> <laughs> from Amari from the US. Okay. I don't know if you've listened to any of their Maybe. songs. Um, mm -hmm. After the Love is Gone, uh, September, mm -hmm. and a few other um, very I like hits of theirs. Okay. Yeah, they're very popular with older people. Um, I but see. I like to revisit stuff like that because sometimes they lend you ideas when you're crafting up with new mm -hmm. things. And that is actually something that we also like to do. Yeah. Inspiration country. is really key. Now let's talk about music. I've got a lot of your favorite, but then 30 billion is one of the things I like. <laughs> Tell us the story. How did it come about? What, what is the thing behind it? Okay, so I, I really wish uh, Virgin, our drama and composer, was here to give more light on this because he usually comes up with the song ideas. Okay. But uh, he came up with the idea for that song. Uh, he was like, he wanted us to try something which was more of like more hip, had this like Afro beats mm. and poppy vibe, which a lot of like youthful people who yeah. resonate like would kind of like vibe along to. And somehow that free 30 million came into the, it came into our mind because the video has a song ar along those lines. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not like we took the freeze from him. We, we all, we looked at the elements of the song and um, people who, play songs like this, I like to go out to party, like to rave, so it's usually money, flashy lights, strobe lights and all that, so we thought of like these things and we injected them to the lyrics, that's how come you have a 30 billion over there. So it's a song about money, mm. but money makes the world go round, it's a song about partying all right. yeah. as well. So if you haven't checked out 30 billion by Fra, it's, it's a good tune, you should check it out. Then uh, I'm gone. I love it when musicians take issues that are in society and you know hammer call mm -hmm. for change and all that. So it, your music should have something inside where yes. you know. And mm -hmm. then then you in, I'm gone. You talk about domestic violence yeah. and all that. I've seen um, musicians here, not just band, mm -hmm. talk about issues. Even even government, you know, when things are not going to yeah. do so, they will talk about that. Yeah. But then the moment a musician is bold enough to address issues of the society and maybe go after the government, you tag that's partisan. Yeah. Why, why is it so? Even though we all have political parties we belong to, but then the moment you want to voice out, you're talking about domestic violence, but mm -hmm. someone wants to talk about politics and the hardship, and then they want to go after you and say you're partisan. How, how do you feel in that space as a musician, you know, drumming something home? Or you just don't want to play the politics part? Pol pol political. Um, I think there are enough artists uh, addressing political <laughs> So you leave it to them? <laughs> oh, no, no, okay, yeah. we, we can address it. Uh, we, we actually have a song called Doom Song, so. although we didn't explicitly yeah. make it like a political song. It's like kind of like a satire, because yeah. we compared the erratic power supply during those days to the affection you receive from a lover who is inconsistent. Mm. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so the same way um, today you have power, tomorrow you don't. Like, we just liken it to you having a, a partner being a, a man or a woman, and it's like today they are minding, you know, they are minding, they are minding. Like, yeah. They kind of like playing this, she loves me, she loves you not, ping pong thing with you, and we made that into a song. So, although it's not explicitly um, political, we used the situation in Ghana yeah. at that time. So you could read some political meaning into that, mm. um, but we didn't want to go all out for a very for a very good reason. And people yeah. hate it when you, when, you, when you talk about the truth. Yeah. People hated Jesus Christ for it. They hated mm. Felakuti. He was actually um, hmm. banned, Fela. yeah, from coming to Ghana because uh, he performed, <laughs> I think, at the Black Star Square, a song, a song called uh, "Zombie," and which described the way and manner in which uh, soldiers were being used by the government to bully um, people, to bully political opponents. They're like, they don't have a mind of their own. They're like zombies being given orders. Mm -hmm. And 
this instigated unrest among people who were at the concert and I think there was a riot after that. People went from the concert to Osu area to go and riot, something like that, and the government was not so happy about it. Okay. It was banned from uh, coming to Ghana. Thankfully, Ghana's political climate is much calmer. Much better yeah. Now. yeah. Even though sometimes they come after them, yeah, but yeah. of course. You know, people are, st are still, you know, partisan, very partisan in this very this good. side of yeah. our world. So Later, we'll, we'll talk <laughs> about that because uh, uh, some musicians, they'll campaign when things go bad. Yeah. There's a whole lot. Um, they say they always go after yeah. Sarko, they do have go after Sami. But then we've mm. all got choices, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm still seated with the band for a Ghanaian band, instrumentalist. I'm here with Salom and George. We're talking music and everything we should see about their band. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we delve more into their music. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching Talk Entertainment on Ghana Web TV. I'm here with the band Fra. Would you say that Ghana, yeah. the country where you mm -hmm. are, they have given you your flowers in terms of the good music that you do, the traction, everything, appreciating on all levels? Would you feel like the flowers have been given? Well, I think I think they have because um, anytime you come to a Fra concert, the mm -hmm. place is always packed, and that wouldn't have been the case if people were not supportive of what we do as a band but you know there's always more room for improvement like we would like the media to you know throw more light on what's going on in the band um, in the band side of music it's like all attention is, is towards the artists the people who do solo projects and all of that but um, a lot of attention has not yet been given to the band um, side of things but there, there's wonderful things going on at that side of music too. So I think the media should should try to also look towards our, our direction. We have good musicians there, Very. and if you are if you were at our, our concert, Fraten. yeah, our last concert, which was just <laughs> two weeks ago, you would have been so impressed. We had some of the finest bands in the country perform on that night, and. They, they may not be known down here, but trust me, the, everyone gave the performance of their lives. That, that's what we do at our concerts. It's okay. always a jam, involve the audience in everything that we do. So they always go home with a lot of great memories. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So Ghana, uh, Shatawali got the Esther movement and then mm -hmm. Stoneboy <laughs> being native. So when we, if you are a uh, fan of Frau, how do you call yourself? We are part of the family. Framin. Framin. So family Framin. with Fram. Framin. Yeah. Hey, just say fraternity, <laughs> Framin. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love that. I love that. But then uh, currently, is there any artists or band that you wish to partner with, uh, like collaboration and stuff like that? Well, I think... Um, I know you have a new project coming out. Yes, we do. Um, I think we have already collaborated with... Um, a couple of bands and artists, but um, definitely there are more bands who would like to collaborate with. We, we already have a song with Chicheku. He, he is a Ghanaian musician based in France and he has a band. He actually introduced us to all these touring circuits and all of that. So he helped us, you know, get our first tour to some extent. So we have a, um, a song with him. We also have a song with Senku Live. I don't know if you know of the Senku Live mm. band. They also um, uh, an awesome group that plays in Ghana. We have a song with them, but we'd definitely like to do something with Wiala, oh, definitely Sound Trophy, um, probably Jedu Blay and Bule. Do you have something with Aduma? Oh, oh yeah. Aduma <laughs> was the first, yeah. first yeah. artist. Because we I love her vibe, and I'm like, you know, when you mention, I'm like, yeah. 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 Great. We do. We have two, yeah, two, two records with okay. Aduma. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. Great. One on our first album. Um, it's called Ima. Yeah, it's a guy's anthem. They really love it. Mm, you should <laughs> and, check out Ma. Yes, and the second one is Hani Maya, which also features Queen Ayoko. So it features Aduma and Queen Ayoko. That's okay. on our second album. All right. Yeah. Right. So music-wise, you guys are doing great music and all that. But Salom, what would you say has been some of the challenges working together as a band and, you know, 
selling your music, your sounds to everyone, you know, to the rest of the world? So the very first uh, one has been the acceptance. Uh, you have friends and family, people very close to you, questioning what you are doing. And you know how it feels like when people are around you are questioning what you're doing? It feels like what you're doing is not really going to work out. So that constant negativity tends to get into the way. You need to be very mentally like strong to look past it and remain focused on what uh, you are doing. So I can reasonably see most of the band members, like the band uh, has been very, very strong in that mm -hmm. uh, regard, with that resolve. Uh, we've stood our ground and we've been able to overcome that very first uh, block, that is acceptance, people around you questioning what you're doing, mm -hmm. whether it's actually going to work out, whether is this marketable, is this going to bring money? Um, your parents will, will, will always ask you, why have you gone to university and dropped your degree and playing in bars and pubs? It doesn't make sense to them. So that was the very first hurdle. The second part had to do with finances. Mm -hmm. So you, let me start with the sponsorship. Okay. So when you're going out to look for sponsorship as a band, uh, the same way it's difficult for individuals to view you, the group, as an artist, corporate institutions also have that difficulty because they're used to seeing rappers and solo singers show up on their doorsteps with some kind of like proposition for a partnership and all that. But when we do it, and also couple with the fact that they think you're not so big, yeah. they tend to shy away. And uh, we've had, uh, it's quite tough in that department. So, so far, we've had to be organizing most of our projects with a combination of band um, contributions, like individual contributions, and also the coffers that the band has uh, money we've made from doing gigs, Yes, in uh, in in our when we are not doing our own music, we do cover events for weddings, and yeah. yes, weddings and all that. Okay. Uh, also for other artists, we've actually worked with quite a number of um, artists, both gospel and secular. I can mention so many, and we save up that money and put it down and try to organize our own stuff because we don't have any investor or any company stepping in and saying, okay, I'm going to take care of this for you. I'm going to, nah, it's not really been there. Uh, God being so good, I think with, the, with our last event, we had uh, Ravens Consultant stepping in, yeah. coming on board with us. And I think that they are our very first um, investor, so to speak. So the finances have been very, very um, tricky. Very, very, very tricky. But Can you imagine? I think we are at that point where we are, you know, at the peak of the mountain, about to slide down. It will happen, yeah. yeah. But you, you know, it, it, it takes someone who really appreciates music yeah. to, you, you know, appreciate sound. So, so me, when someone like, oh, they are not, I'm like, you don't know music. You don't <laughs> appreciate quality yeah. sound. You are, you are used to the, you know, <laughs> less party thing. But yeah. if you really feel music, understand, you yeah. fall in love with Fra. So, uh, if we don't have to attend your concert, do you have to? Do you play at? Paul, do you, how do you play? Uh, or you have to wait for Fra the concert before we see you live in action. You mentioned that you do like uh, weddings and corporate events. And yeah, stuff but like most of those events are private events, oh, so yes. yeah, mm -hmm. we, we can't put it on our pages yes. and all of that. You understand? Yeah, it's I someone's understand party that. wedding, they are private events. Um, I think besides the main fraternity, we always try to hold another concert something little, mm. in, be it in the form of an album launch or something. This year, we're actually trying to do another fraternity okay. out of Accra. Okay. You understand? Because we've been doing the, the past editions within Accra. Yeah, Accra. Yeah. We, we feel it's time for us to take fraternity out of Accra to another city. So we are still, you know, in, in discussions with people out there. You know, we don't live there, so we need to partner with people who are actually there. I think Takradi will do, because, you know, they, they have, like, I've, I've been to Takradi a okay. couple of times, and they also appreciate the sounds and uh, all yeah, the things yeah. here. So, Fra, have you told the world, where are some of the events that you've been to? And, of course, you're saying that this year there are plans for it, but then yeah. let's talk about tour, selling your music, what you do, the quality to the rest of the people, maybe on the African continent or part of the world. Okay, so our very first um, trip together as a band. Um, prior to that, I think some of the band members had traveled individually. But mm. together as a unit, going out there to go and do our own music, was in 2019. Okay. Uh, we auditioned for, we auditioned on a project called uh, Pisavi by 
an organization called Casa Africa. And this was based on the recommendation of our friend Chicheku, yeah. who is very conversant with the touring landscape. So he advised us to get ourselves out there and that people in Europe would love our music. So we applied, um, we were picked, and we were asked to come and audition out of like 12 bands. Chechuku himself was there, so his band and Fra, we were chosen to go on a tour for six weeks in Spain. Mm -hmm. So that was, I think, our first major breakthrough. We did the nine shows in nine different locations. Which year was that, 2019? 2019 yeah. across Spain. And it was an eye-opening experience for us, having to play music. And man, people in Europe love Ghanaian music. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this because any time we went on stage, every single venue we played at, the place was full right before we came on stage. And from the first song to the last song, even though they don't understand the language, the way they relate, the way they look at you, they try to repeat the words. It's funny when you hear Europeans from this country. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. And all, they try to repeat the words. They try to get themselves involved in the music. And it's very encouraging because we saw songs we wrote in our bedrooms. We sat down to piece together being repeated, uh, choruses being sung by our audiences in Europe. And it didn't end there. We came back and we did a showcase in Morocco, in Rabat. That was later that year called uh, mm -hmm. Vista for Music. And the feedback from that one too was very like phenomenal. And we had a number of bookings from that particular show for the next year, 2020, in summer. That's, um, okay. So I think in 2020, we went to Zanzibar. There's a show called, uh, there's a festival called South East Abuzara, which is one of the biggest in East Africa. We also performed there and that, I mean, I've, that, that show, I just want to go back to Zanzibar just because of that show. It's written all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Yeah, when we came back from Zanzibar and I think that's when COVID, COVID struck. Yeah, okay. So we couldn't make it for any of our bookings later that year 2020 we were just indoors it was difficult yeah 2020, 2020, 2020 it was because so. all you know all sides yeah, yeah. no venues doing live music mm -hmm. so we we're just indoors, indoors what we were having was like the virtual thing where people play then you could go yeah. on youtube and go and watch go and watch so that's what we did for 2020 mm. and subsequently 2021 we we did that again and but uh I with a few people in with, attendance. Yeah, with a few people in attendance. Yeah, yeah we did that. We did that again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, later that year in 2020, 2021 was I said like that year. It's just last year. In 2021, we had the chance to do a festival called Nyege Nyege. Okay. Oh, that was 2022. 2022. 20, right, yeah, that was last. That year. That was last year. <laughs> that was last year. <laughs> yeah. I 2021 was last year. I'm yeah. Still, yeah. Living in the time capsule. So. Uh, Last year, yes, we did Nyagenyage in Uganda, and we went there with Adoma. Yep. So we, we, uh, we did a set with her, and also we did a set as Fra as well. It was somewhere in Itanda Falls on the Nile River. Yeah, that's oh, that experience nice was, 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 you know, you had to sleep in tents and all of that. Uh, it, as we, earlier, yes. we had the conversation, usually people love the band, you know, you have to go out, get yeah. just off somewhere. Yes. Off. There's no yeah. network even. It was beautiful. Yeah, there's no network. I yeah. see. Yeah. Just off <laughs> you had to bath in the river. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But but in Africa, one of my favorite bands, South East, like, would there ever be any something with them? With or, them. Because they are cool too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, never definitely. say never. Mm -hmm. We just need to, you know, build the connection and, and it will, and it will, it will happen. happen. All right. Mm -hmm. But then in, in Ghana, when we talk about music, a lot of artists say that, okay, sometimes they, they do amazing, but when it comes to our awards, they are sidelined. But a band, would you say the Ghana Music Awards, the Ghana Music Industry, you have like a safe spot for your safe category that you know that, okay, <laughs> this is it. At the end of the day, we are appreciating bands, we are hammering and then letting people get the attention that okay, bands do not just about the musicians. Yeah. So when you talk about Ghana Music Awards, how would you say? Uh, I, I don't I don't think so. They usually uh, nominators under group of the year, which I think is too broad. It's an umbrella term. I, yeah, yeah, for for the type of music we do because you are you you are in that same group with groups like Keche, 
Um, I know. I, it's like, you know, those people are mainstream, so you definitely wouldn't win, wouldn't win the award. So I think uh, moving on, um, um, award organizers or event organizers should probably do a band category. Yeah. yeah. Probably I'll band see. of the year or something. That makes more sense because when you put us under one umbrella group of the year, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's too broad. I agree. Yeah. I totally agree with that. But then before we wrap up, uh, what are the plans for the year 2023? 2023. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I was going to mention that uh, we did a showcase in Portugal last year in uh, October. Uh, which is called the World Music Expo. Womex is the biggest um, meeting of music professionals in the world. They bring people from all over the world. I think about uh, how many how many people are usually in attendance? Around three thousand yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, music professionals. So you get to connect with these people. You get to expose yourself to them and sell your brand and your band or your music to them. And uh, you, a lot of things can come out of that: record deals, okay. bookings for tours. Um, marketing opportunities for your music, having the ability to get you out there on um, Spotify and Apple Music playlists. So we did Womex and the response once again was very good. And out of that we have some bookings for yeah. for this year, yeah. 2023. So we'll be going back on the road. Okay. Uh, God willing in June. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe later in the year we could have another fraternity. Yeah, in yeah. another region, as another I said. Region. In a region, yeah. great, yeah. great, great. Since you missed the last one, you have to probably... I, ha I was working, <laughs> a pro a pro pro me though, but yeah. it was great talking to you. Then what, for the, uh, for the fans, where can they find you, your music, and also on social media, where can we connect? So, um, you can find us on all social media as The Band Fra. The Band Fra. Yeah, and it's the same on all um, online music stores. Just search Fra. I think it's Fra there. With the exclamation mark, don't mm. leave it out. <laughs> okay. F R A with the exclamation mark. You find our music everywhere on YouTube. Yeah, we're everywhere. Great. So thank you very much, George and Salom, for today's conversation. Yeah, uh, and I must say, you guys are doing amazing. Thanks. The first time I heard your sound, I was blown away. I was like, this is good. I love good music too. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, this is it. So for those of you who are yet to discover Fra, you know that you've missed a lot, but you can join the family. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. So thank you very much for doing this with us. We really appreciate you. We're yeah. going to support, as you say, the media. So whatever yeah. you're going to do, we're going to yeah. get on board because good music, we love to also see that, okay, Ghana is winning on the international platform, whatever. And then when we talk of bands, they're going to chip in front, not just like your CBC, the Ramblers and all yes, that. Yes, the new awesome. school to are on board. Yeah. Thank you very much and to you who did the watching, I must say thank you very much for watching this episode of Talk Attainment. I am Paula Amabroni. We'll be back with something bigger. Thanks for watching.